Hello everyone, it's Bibi Cameron here. Welcome to a new Tonic Craft Kit video. Today I'm going to be sharing ideas and inspiration using the new Tonic Craft Kit 18. This kit includes a bottle of the new Nubo Dream Drops, confetti, glitter, Nubo Drops, a paper pack with 24 sheets in four different designs, more different papers in coordinating colors, glitter paper, pearlescent paper, texture paper, and this cotton paper, which is extra yummy. You will have this kind of super oleographic paper as well. So the kit includes a die set and a stamp set. These are my favorite parts of the kit because this you can keep forever. The stamp set includes four large sentiments and decorative hearts, and these stamps measure five inches the longest and three inches the shortest plus the hearts. The die set, which is one of the most addictive things, includes seven dies. And I'm going to show you a close up of these dies here because they will die with intricate detail, but they are not going to cut the edges of the paper. This die here also comes with a coordinating die and you will be able to cut that beautiful edge if you use these dies together. I also have here this die that actually I'm showing upside down. And I think these dies have been designed to be used together because they create a whole pattern, but you can also use them individually. This die here is just perfect to die cut the side panels of boxes, bags, or any rectangular project. You will also get this dotty die here in this leafy and floral dye to create beautiful patterns on the paper. All these dyes measures about six inches and the thinner dye measures just a quarter of an inch and the wider dye measures two inches and a half. I have the mission to share ideas and inspiration using these dyes, so here I go. Okay, if you are ready, we are going to get some die cutting muscle today. And I'm going to recycle an old idea to create these beautiful paper purses or boxes. You only need eight pieces of paper to create this project. And in my blog, you will find the size of each piece. So don't worry about taking notes of the size of anything here. In this video, you will see how I put the purse together. And this is easy peasy. Once you make one, you will be able to mass produce this. Okay, I'm going to use a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock and I'm going to cut this at six inches. So this piece here measures six inches by 12 inches. Six inches is also the width of the die. Now I'm going to place the paper like so on the scoring board and I'm going to score at half inch, at one inch, at four and an eight, at five inches three quarters and nine and nine and a half I'm going to die cut the paper and I need to make sure that the die is a little bit far from this scoring line and I need to make sure that the edges of the die are on the paper please pay attention where I'm placing the die because I have a name that has a two and a half inches from the edge to the first scoring line and in the other end of the paper, you will find two scoring lines just half inch one after the other one. So we are going to work in this wider edge here. And I'm going to use these two dies together because one is going to die cut the intricate detail and the other one is going to die cut the edge. I'm also going to use another dies in the kit and I'm taking my time to know exactly where to place those dies. And then I'm going to run this through the machine a couple of times, just with all the dies on the paper, so I get this cut in one go. So 
So here's where you can see the beauty of those die cuts because you can see how perfect these dies cut the paper and how crisp and sharp are the die cutting lines. These are known as decorative dies because with them you can die cut side panels of a box, a tag, a background for a car, and you can use them in different ways to create a wide variety of projects in different sizes as well. And they will add always that special touch to your projects. And you can also use your favorite color cardstock. So I'm going to finish folding the paper over all the scoring lines here, and you will be able to see the shape of the pores just like that. The next thing I'm going to do is to cut a couple of pieces from this paper, and I'm going to paste those pieces behind the die cut panels. So this paper here is going to give a stability to the pores, it's going to make it more sturdy, and I'm also going to make the die cut to pop a little bit more. So the size of these pieces are three and a quarter inches by six inches. And I'm also going to need a piece that measures two and a half inches by six inches. This piece is going to go behind the flap of the purse so that I'm going to need to die cut it with this frame die. Remember that the size of every single piece of paper you need for this purse are in my blog and the link is in the video description just below this video. Okay, so I got this piece just perfectly die cut and all I have to do is to glue these cream pieces behind the die cut panels. I also like to add magnets to this box because that will keep the box closed. And to do that, I just stick the magnet like I'm doing here and I use a piece of paper to secure the magnet in place. So I close the box and I found the exact position of the other magnet and I repeat the same process. Okay, so this box needs the side panels and the handle. To make the side panels, all I have to do is to cut two pieces of paper that measures two inches and a half by six inches. I'm going to fold the paper in half and then I'm going to use a scoring tool to score a half inch from this edge. If you see here, this is the edge I need to score and then I'm going to turn around the paper and I'm going to score at three inches and a quarter because that's the height of the box. I'm going to cut these pieces like so. And once I have this done, I can glue them to the box. All we have to do here is to make sure that the scoring line and the edge of the paper are aligned and that when we fold the paper, this paper that we are gluing here is not going to stop the paper from folding. So you will notice that if you cut these pieces slightly larger than the sizes I'm giving you, the back might not fold like it's folding here. So it's very important to cut them the same size or slightly thinner, but just a little bit. And then I'm going to fold the paper like so, and I'm going to glue the sides of the box to the front and the back panel. And I'm going to be using Nubo Deluxe Adhesive, but you can also use a strong double-sided tape. All you have to do here is to make sure that all the edges are perfectly aligned to guarantee that your box is going to be nicely assembled. So I leave this extra paper here at the top to create a flap that will keep any content inside secure. Of course, you can just fold it like that, but I like to fold it like so. So it seems like there is no a difference, but it's a big difference in that area there. All I have to do now is to stick the handle. You can make the handle as long as you want or as short as you want or not add a handle at all. 
but what I do is to cut a piece of paper that measures half inch by eight inches. I score a line at half inch of each end and then I glue the handle like I'm showing here. You need to make sure that your handle is properly attached to the pores if you are going to add a handle. And there is another way to close the box. And you can also make a little hole and add a ribbon to keep it closed. But I prefer the magnet because it's kind of more practical. From here, all I have to do is to embellish and I'm going to use this die set here by Tonic Studios as well to die cut a little flower. And I'm also going to use these new Nubo crystals that are absolutely beautiful. And perhaps you can see there how much value those little embellishments add to this project. So that's the box. You can see the box here inside and I'm going to turn around the box so you can see this 360 degrees and I'm going to move to the next project, similar but easier. And it's this box or basket here. Okay, to make this basket, I use a six by 12 piece of cardstock and I score at five inches and at seven inches. This part here in the center is going to be the bottom of the box and you can make it as wide as you want or as narrow as you want. So the bottom of this box or basket measures two inches. Now I'm going to die cut this piece using these dies and I'm going to cut both ends. So after running this through the machine, this is how the paper is going to look. For the side panels of this box, I'm going to use a three inches width piece of paper. I'm going to score it in half, and then I'm going to score a half inch each end. I'm going to use the height of the box as reference to trace a scoring line at two inches and a half more or less. I'm going to cut the two side panels from this paper. So I'm doing exactly the same I did to create the side panels of the previous box and because the bottom of the box measures two inches I cut this piece of paper that measures three inches and I score half inch each side so the middle piece measures two inches and it will match perfectly with that bottom of the box there can you see that so the width of the side panels is the width of the bottom of your box plus one inch. So I hope you understand what I mean. You can trim any excess of paper and remember that you can cut another piece of paper that measures two inches, in this case, two inches by six to cover these uh, pieces here and to have a better finish in there. And all you have to do here is to glue the side panels in place embellish and add a handle. I'm also going to be using the floral dies from the Tonic Craft Kit number no. five. And if you missed this kit, remember that Tonic Studios is offering previous kit to buy now and for a short period of time while supplies last. The links are in the video description. And to keep decorating this box, I'm also going to use this die here to create that pattern on that piece of paper. That die is beautiful. You can also pierce the whole background of a panel with that die or also the edges of a card. So embellishing this is super easy. You can do this in any way you want. I'm also shaping these flowers here to be able to finish this project. I'm also going to be using the Nubo Dreams drops included in the kit just to add a dot of color there and I'm going to add a handle. But to add the handle uh, to this box, I decided to use brads so that the handle move towards the front and the back of the box, and I have enough room to put anything I want inside the box. I had the idea to put inside handmade cards and envelopes, and this box will fit at least 20 of them. These are C6 standard American size, but of course you can make this box a little bit larger and fit another card sizes. My toddler here 
say it, mommy, you can put also your Nubo drops there. So that's what I'm doing here. And also to show you that this will hold some weight. So it's very sturdy as well, and it's just made with one layer of paper. I was testing this box and checking how much weight it can hold. And I put here the whole new collection of Nubo Dream Drops, and there is room for more. And although these bottles are not heavy, you can have a good idea of how much weight this can hold. Here I have all the colors that will be available soon. And if you get this kit, you will also have the chance to give them a try. I really like the colors. I like that they are opaque. They produce this iridescent, pearlescent shine. It's really beautiful. And I'm going to show you here in this card as I use the drops in the kit to embellish that flower. So this is a very simple card, but it's also an extra idea so that you can create super easy cards to put inside the box and to make this card, I cut in half an A4 sheet of cardstock and I fold it in half like so. Then using one of the dies in the kit, I just die cut the front panel of the card and using one of the stamps in the kit, I also stamped the front panel and I embellish using the floral die cuts from the craft kit number five. To finish, I just apply the Nubo Dream Drops, and I was done. So you can also make super simple cards using the products in this kit together with any other supply you have in your stash. And this is another card base that you can also embellish in any way you want or just leave it very simple and clean. So there you go. And now I want to share with you another super simple card idea. And this is a easel gatefold card. So to make it, I use a piece of paper that measures six inches by 12 and I fold the paper like so. And then I burnish the paper using the bond folder and using the dies in the kit, I die cut the two top folding pieces like I'm showing here. And there are various things you can do from here. And I made a six by six inches card just to give you some examples. So you can use this die cut piece as a kind of envelope for your cards. And you can put your cards in vertical or in horizontal inside that wrapping envelope. But then I decided to do something else and I glue this card base to that die cut panel like so. And I also glue this side panel to the card like so. So that it gives you an idea to use this die cut in the top folding of a card as well to embellish. I also use this die cut sentiment by Tonic Studios. And here is the die I use to do that. It's a very beautiful die. And I die cut two sentiments. I glue them on top of each other. And I also die cut the background of the sentiment. And I just stuck the sentiment on it like so. So this is a super easy way to create a very beautiful die cut. And then I use dimensionals to stick this to the front panel. But pay attention because when I was gluing this to the card, I fold the paper like so, and I made sure that those dimensionals were not glued on top of the bottom flap so that I can simply slide this in and close the card in that way. I also embellish this card using the Nubo Dream Drops in the kit. And I also use some of these new Nubo crystals, which are extremely beautiful. These crystals comes in three different sizes and I use the tiny ones for the front of this card. And I use the Nubo de Louvre adhesive to stick them to that die cut panel as I'm showing here. So that's all I did to create this card, which is super, super easy as well. And yes, you can make a smaller gatefold cards like this one here. This is a C6 standard British size. And why is this? It's because the die width is six inches. So that's the minimum length you can create your cards. 
So I just made this one here to show you a sample and then you can also transform this into a little box or a basket or you can also use this as a party favor or a table decoration. All I did was folding the paper in half like so and then using a scoring tool I score a line at one inch from the center folding. So that's all I have to do to give shape to this mini box. And to quickly finish this, I also use a piece of ribbon to close this box at the top. And you can also use this other die included in the kit and you will get something like this. So this is extremely easy, it's another idea. And you can also make this box taller or shorter. You can fit different products inside, that's completely up to you. And you might need to play a little bit with the size of the paper. I use for this project a sheet of paper that measures six inches by 10 inches and a half. And when I fold it in half, I make sure that in the center, it will perfectly fit an A6 card base. So I also tried another dies in the kit because I wanted to show you how beautiful they are. Using these two dies together, you can complete a whole pattern. You can just cut the paper to create a wrapping band for your cards or for boxes. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel or visit my blog for more ideas and inspiration. There is a supply list in the video description. You will find there where to buy the kit, where to order previous kits until supply last, where to get other supplies I'm using in this video as well. Thank you very much for watching and happy crafting. Bye.